the phone is going on in here? <laughs> that is Alan. <laughs> what the? Well, listen, this is, this is my theory. First of all, where are we? We're at Aqualand. Right, and this is foam utopia. So there is just pallets of foam, and Greg said, no matter what we want, we can have it. So you know what? We're gonna use 45 cans of foam on my feature. Micho, I know I gave you a hard time, but I still think you did a fantastic job. So you did exactly the way I would have done it, and Alan probably would have done it. Hey, Micho, thanks a lot, buddy. Yes, Good sir. job. Uh, the bill's in the mail, Micho, just saying, for the foam, <laughs> okay? All right. What's up everybody? We are back day two. We got Alan here, he's already rolling. I mean, I don't even know if you slept, but barely. <laughs> Is that through anticipation and excitement or with just your head was spinning with what was happening, you know, what happened in day one and what you want to get accomplished today? Yeah, I mean, yesterday we did so good. I was like, I, I just was trying to think like, how can we be the most efficient we can be today and still have another great day? We're in good shape, I think. So why don't you walk, it out. walk me through just a little bit because I don't want to show everything to the viewers out there, but let's walk down here in the pond real quick and just highlight some of the cool features that you were really excited about and that kind of set you apart as an artist that you're trying to implement into your design. Well, I mean, one of the things I like the most, I really like to replicate nature. So this little hidden falls over here is really one of my favorite things because we use very few rocks, but we use some nice big boulders and, you know, they have a lot of different shape and angles to them. So, you know, that's one of the things that I always look for. And then adding just like a little bit more of a man-made stack slate over there into our little secret area. This whole section over here, once we get it all treed off, I think it's going to be really cool. And it's going to look like individual outdoor spaces too, right. which I think is such a really, really cool aspect to your designs. It gives a lot of strength and encourages that interactivity and sets them apart. Yeah, because that's the whole thing. It's like, you've got to be able to see a little glimpse of something, but it has to draw you. So everything here that I design is going to be interactive as far as, you know, how you transition through things. And that's part of the fun of it. I mean, remember when you're a kid bouncing across rocks and going here and there, it doesn't change more adults. That's awesome. So what's your ambition for today or where do you see us or hopefully see us getting as far as point of progress? Just the way the design is set up. We have a little area over here that we got to do a patio and then the pond is going to kind of cut in over there. So really, you know, my anticipation would be is if we can get pretty much from the excavator over this way done today and get some carved out, but you know how the access is, right? Yep. So just like a job site, we got to work from there and work our way out. Perfect world to be able to drive around, but it's not a perfect world. <laughs> But we're gonna make it perfect. Excellent, absolutely. We got the real muscle now pulled in on the project. So come on down here, Nick. Make sure you're standing about a foot below your dad so we know you're know, actually a little bit tall. Tell us who this fine young gentleman is. You tell us who you are. I'm Nick Decker. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, you're Alan's youngest son, right? Yeah. And you've been working with him a lot over the last few years as you've gotten older. Are you excited to be here? Yeah. yeah? Well, we're excited to have you because I've seen you work, working with you down at Shacks and working alongside your dad. It's really awesome to see that. I love seeing generational stuff happen like this. You're excited to get rolling today? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you're gonna start pointing fingers to him, telling him what to do or what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dad, it's time to order lunch. That's, that's awesome, man. Well, I'm happy that you're here. And Al, we're going to get cruising, huh?
not done. Believe me, you got right to the point of the weir setting the weir stones, which are those rocks that the water is going to overflow and flow down into this basin. So I know one of the biggest maybe head scratching moments that we've had so far is just kind of figuring out how this basin is going to get put together because really because of access is really start is what is the site challenges are kind of what's forcing us to do a lot of this and like <laughs> right. Um, so, it's aggravating, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> If it were later in the day, cold beer might speed up the yeah. creative process or at least the decision making process. So why don't we run down with me what you're thinking so that our viewers can kind of understand what's kind of going through your head right now with the existing challenges. Well, I mean, because of the access, and I don't really want to give on the design, right? Yeah. Just because I want it to be what, what we originally anticipated. We got multiple waterfalls going on here and we have to figure out how to get these reservoirs and the bigger rocks set for the waterfall. We're limited with reach, we're limited with capacity of this machine and access because we have this deck behind us. So we're going to piecemeal it. We're going to have to start over here. We're going to pull the liner back. It's just going to be more work, but the end result is going to be exactly what we want. Yeah. Which is something that I think as the artist that you are, you have to be willing to adapt and overcome, but also at the same time stay true to what your artistic vision is. And that's really what gets you to push your boundaries in the first place, right? If you were just to take the easy way out and say, oh, screw it. You know, we're just going to, because we can't do these things, you wouldn't have gotten yourself artistically to where you're at today, right? No, you always got to push envelope and just because something's hard you know I always said you know nothing good comes easy right so sure. if you want your outcome we got to do what we got to do and you can't veer from it yeah. it's got to stay that way with that being said those of you contractors out there don't do it at the behest of your profit yes you should always know your numbers before you become an artist because that's how people go bankrupt teaching moment teaching moment right there know your numbers not at the sacrifice of your artistic vision because you got to stay in business to be in business and if you know your numbers you can be as artistic as you want you'll know how to charge for that extra time that it's going to take how was that we are amazing <laughs> gold all right <laughs>
man. You're like an artist with a brush. Oh my gosh. For those of you out there that don't know what the heck is going on and you're scratching your heads asking yourself, Chris, why all the foam? Alan, why all the foam? What we're doing here is we are creating a bib liner or essentially a false bottom in what otherwise was a huge cavity all in through here behind the rocks. Now, because of the way we built this, this is a huge negative edge and this is the weir that is establishing water level in the pond, but we also built a waterfall on this side of the pond. With that huge void space in here, none of that water that's flowing out from the pond would have made it over the rocks that you intended to be waterfall stones, right? Right, right. because this happens all the time too, is even though you carve stuff out, you always end up building farther out, right? So that's where the bib liner comes in and it just allows for just a much better look. We'll have water kind of going through there now rather than all the rocks being tight and just like rock to rock. So right. this just creates a much more natural feel just like you see in nature. Right, and how we accomplish that is we ended up filling all the void space with gravel, which is relatively cheap compared to the 12 cans of foam that we had to use to cover this all up. So you can actually do bib liners two different ways, right? You can foam it the way Mitro did and put a piece of fabric, which is permeable over it. He sealed up this entire thing, or you can take- And you could do a bib liner with, you could cut a scrap piece of liner, you could trace it all out, and then you could just foam the whole perimeter. You put a little gravel on there to pinch it all into the edges. And because it's EPDM, it's a waterproof membrane, which is right. what we so use in our solid. ponds. So it's solid and you would have just had to trace the perimeter. There's two now, schools of thought though, right? Exactly. Why don't you tell me what those two schools of thought are? So there is a particular man in your organization that says that this is much better in our freeze thaw climates, Mr. Ed Ballou's. Ed has been messing with this as well as you guys, because you guys are R&D. And because of our freeze thaw cycles, this stays much more flexible and it's just that much more conducive to our climate, I guess. Yeah. And what happens is, is that fabric actually clogs up with all the sediment and debris and ends up being like freaking concrete cloth over time, making it so it is almost impervious at to a certain point, right? So yes, there are two ways to do it. This is actually how we do it in the field every day at Team Aquascape. I just like it for a couple reasons also is that EPDM liner tends to slide around on that wet foam. Yep. And what can happen is, is you can develop little holes in the foam that you don't necessarily see after you rock things in. And that fabric being the texture that is kind of sticking to that foam a heck of a lot easier. And plus the fact, like you said, because it does the, all the sediment and stuff traps it, even if that foam goes bad eventually, it's not gonna leak. Yeah. And I don't mean leak as outside your liner, I mean go behind the rocks and not create the effect you want. It's a so, controlled thing, Exactly. right? Micho, I know I gave you a hard time, but I still think you did a fantastic job. So you did exactly the way I would have done it and Alan probably would have done it. Hey Micho, thanks a lot, buddy. Yes, Good sir. job. The bill's in the mail, Micho, just saying for the foam, <laughs> okay? All right. All right, Alan, while we're right here and we talked about the bib liner, why don't you tell us where else we're at as far as the basin and, and the progress and how you're feeling today? Uh, actually, I, I feel really good right now because we got this whole, this zero edge kind of falling into our recessed patio area. We started to set another flank rock for that little waterfall we got coming in here. So now we can really, we have to finish setting this rock so we can keep digging because with the reach and ever our access, we got to finish the side before yep. we can keep moving. So Which I think was, we're doing great. And that was that uh, challenge that we were talking about at lunch, you right. know, the strategery of it. Like you said, sometimes you're kind of like back and forth of what, you know, how you want to tackle it, but it's worth discussing it a little bit ahead of time. So it saves us work in the long run. For sure. It's looking so sexy. Sexy rock. Sexy meet y'all. I believe Judging by the state of affairs, there's a couple beers in hand. Everybody's walking away. We are, yep, that's how it works. All right. Day two. You're always the last man standing. <laughs> is a wrap. You're awesome. Is a wrap. Oh, there they go. Okay, see you in the morning. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yep. We made incredible progress today. We got to the sunken patio area, which is a huge milestone. We've got a majority of the waterfalls that are going to be the main focal point of this area wrapped up. We've got some detail work left to do, but we are in great shape to tomorrow really focus our energy on this area back here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it there and go enjoy some uh, dinner with the pond guy and we'll get back at it hard in the morning and hopefully you guys will see us tomorrow.